Good evening to you, Vajasvi, and to all our viewers from Loudest. We are so glad that you got time for us. So, so my first question to you, Mr. Nigam, is: So, tell us about your journey so far with IPRS. How is it? How is how is it going? Uh, you know, uh, I will first actually describe to you what is IPRS. You know, IPRS is the Indian Performing Rights Society Limited. It's a company yeah. which is a non-profit making com- organization, but it's a company limited by guarantee. So it's a company under the Company Act, formed in 1969, and it collects royalties whenever mu- license or license fee whenever music is played. You know, you know, whenever music is played, they require to take a license to play music. And in music, there are two types of licenses. One is the license in the literary and musical world, which is called as the in simple terms, which is the lyrics. And the composition, the dhun, and second is in the recording of that same uh, literary and musical work. So whenever music is played, recorded music or a cinematographic film is played, you need to take a license for the literary and musical work, and if it's an audio for the sound recording, and if it's an audio visual, then for the audio visual uh, cinematographic film per se. So IPRS collects royalties or license fees and royalties whenever. Uh, its members music gets played as a part of the recording or as a part of the cinematographic film the iprs you know from 69 to today if you if i say see, i've been there with this organization only from 2004 but you know you have got lots of ups and downs you know because if you believe that music you know has been playing from a very long time I mean, as a country we india is a very musical country that you know if you say all our films have music yeah so you know music has been an integral part Of our journey so far, unlike Western world, when music is not a part of the films, music is music, and films do not have generally ninety nine point nine percent of the films do not have music at all. They may have background music, but they do not have song. So, the music is defined as songs or as background music. So, India most of the films do have songs in it because that is how we take our story forward. So, whenever music gets played, you require to take this license, and that is what IPRS does. So whatever uh, money IPRS collects, it's actually being a non-profit making other less is administrative expenses, distributes it back to the authors, composers, and the publishers of the music. Oh, that's great! That's great. So so far so good. Your journey. Yes, you know, keep, uh, copyright in India has always been very challenging. You know, because you know, people you think that you know uh, music is like air. So you know they think that if air is free, even for water, they know they need to pay. But they think that music is like air, and music has to be. You don't need to pay for music. But you know, over a period of time, slowly, the concept that you know you need to pay for music, what you're listening to, is started happening. So you know, everyone slowly started. So you know, it will take a long time, unlike compared to what happens in the Western world, where you know people are much more aware, and that you know, whenever they play music, they require to take licenses. They very obediently take those licenses and pay for that. India it is taking time because it's quite challenging. When you know when you go back to users, they say that you know when we don't sometimes pay taxes or electricity or something. What is this music tax? What they're collecting is so it has been challenging. But yeah, slowly everyone has started paying up. There are miles to go before we do that. Uh, you know, for me the cha- journey has been from 2004 when we were actually a seven crore company. So this year we have crossed 560 crores. So it's quite been a challenge, and it actually, in fact, IPRS has uh, been reformed or in reorganized and rebirthed. Actually, in the last five years, is because you know earlier there used to be huge disputes amongst the music industry. So you know after 2012, uh, Javed Akhtar, who was our chairman, he got the law passed to say that you know authors, composers can. Assign the copyrights, but they will always have an inalienable right to royalty. So you know you can transfer your copyright to a music company or to a film producer, but you cannot assign your equal share of royalty. So that has been the most challenging one from 2012. All that dust got settled. In, in spite of that, there used to be huge disputes. 
The dust got settled only by 2017 when Mr. Akhtar joined the board with uh, new author composers and publishers also came onto board. And then we started a journey. So, you know, from 2017-18, where we were a 45 crore company to today, 560 has quite been remarkable and it's been growing good. Yes, there are a lot of challenges. Yes, we see that, you know, but as a, as a growing organization, every country and every uh, organization in India has its own set of challenges because we are a very unique market. Yeah. You know, I expect that, you know, slowly but steadily, you know, people will start paying for music. That's great. That's great. So, uh, so we were talking about your journey. So, how does IPRS as society that art works, that artists and music composers receive fair compensation for their work and what are the challenges? I'll tell you, you know, the basic thing is what we do is uh, authors and composers and IPRS have actually, whenever we go to a user, we have tariffs for every user. So, you know, we have got different types of tariffs, but depending upon different types of usages, you know, we have tariffs for hotels, restaurants, events, for radio, television, OTT platforms. And most of these tariffs, especially on digital side, are actually on a global benchmark level. Or if they are there, we are always striving to bring them onto global benchmark. Because in the last few years, uh, if you see, especially in the last three, four years after the COVID uh, thing, most of the income has shifted to digital platforms because okay. music has been consumed very heavily. But its consumption has shifted from normal to digital platforms. So whether it be a uh, uh, music streaming services, video OTT services, short video formats and everything. Because, and this has been challenging. Because if you see, in up to 2000-2003-4, you know, the primary format of uh, consumption of music used to only be uh, cassettes and CDs or LP, the physical format, you know. And that time the music companies were in control of their market or in terms of pricing because you, you knew what CDs would be sold at, what CD, uh, this would be sold at. But in the last few years, because technology companies are overtaken because, you know, uh, they have aggregated content from various music service providers and they have started selling the music. You know, we are not in control of the destiny. So you have a challenge in terms of getting a fair share of value. So you know, we always strive with all users to get a fair share of value. We, there have been huge challenges because you know, in India, Unlike the Western world, if you see, uh, Apple, Spotify, have are in US are huge paid subscriber based uh, models. Whereas yeah. in India, uh, it's these are all free services. So you know to get, uh, especially on Spotify, on Savan, and on Wink. So to how to get correct valuations? You know when we see that you know uh, yeah. we need the next amount of money, they say no, oh, no, but we are not making money. So we tell them that look, you know this is your business model. We do not tell you how to monetize your business model. But when if you're using my music or my members' music, then you need to pay me fairly and fairly. In spite of that, you know, uh, we feel the music payments to the uh, to the users and to the owners of copyright are actually not val valued very fairly. So we, this constant dispute is there. But this will only get resolved when everything moves to a paid model. Because, you know, if it goes to a paid model, they need to not make losses. Whatever they are earning, they should they will pay it from that. But as long as they are pay, giving it free to the subscribers, the music industry will always ask for their legitimate share or what they feel is the correct share. Because you know, if you are not making money, doesn't mean that the music is not getting consumed. No? So we say that okay, at least we want it this much as a minimum guarantee plus overflow, whatever, whenever you recover. And because the models are free or advertising based, they are not able to recover that. So they keep us telling us that oh, we are not making money, we are making losses. So we say no. Please understand, that is your business model. If you would have been charging a subscriber, you would have been making enough money. But you are actually, uh, this is a marketing cost. When we talk to a telecom operator, because, you know, Savan or uh, Wink, it's a part of the service. So, and I said, okay, this is not a part of your royalty cost. It's a part of your marketing cost because this is how you are retaining your customers. It's not that you know, you're trying to just make money. You're wanting that if a customer comes to you, you come to my platform and I will give you music, I will give you videos, I will give you X, Y, Z, everything. And I'm giving it to you free. So like a classic example would be IPL today. When you are valuing IPL, probably people give it out to free on a OTT platform or any value. But you pay for the content as per the bidding. So why should music not get fairly paid? 
So, you know, th those are challenges uh, yeah. what we get. But whatever we collect, we try and see that, you know, author, composers, uh, interests are not compromised. And the, even the publishers, because, you know, they are all equal stakeholders. Yeah. The copyright amendment said in 2012 that, you know, the royalty needs to be shared equally between the author, composer and the other ones on our right. In India, uh, music companies are both. Uh, they hold the sound recording rights as label, what you, you listen to this terminology, label and publisher globally or ev everywhere now. So label means uh, who is the owner of the recording and publisher means who is the owner of the literary and musical work. So the music companies in India are the owners of both these rights. So by that, they are members of IPRS. So we need to take care of the interests of the author composers as well as the publisher. And we have been doing it fairly reasonably well. Yes. Yeah. There is a uh, scope That's for improvement, but as a growing organization, you know, we have, we have our own set of challenges. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So in your opinion, how has the music industry evolved in India over the last past decade? And how ha has IPRS adapted to these changes? There are many changes have come in the music industry. And how have you adapted to it? Tell me so about that. You see, in the last 10 to 15 years, the music yeah. consumption has changed format considerably, you know. Yeah. From being just being being streamed and being just a, a pirated copies being circulated on the net by way of a Napster or MP3 download. Actually, the world has moved to on the digital platform where now you have legitimate players coming and supplying music. So you know, customers look, need not download music from a pirated website or anything. At least now there are genuine uh, legitimized OTT players. So the music industry has now started evolving and making partnerships. With all these OTT players, whether yeah. it's Spotify, Apple, Savan, Amazon Music, Wing, then you have various short video formats also, which have quite become very popular. Whether it is YouTube or YouTube Shorts, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Reels, whether it's a Moj, whether it's a Josh and all of them. So, you know, the consumption and the monetization has actually changed because, you know, the way consumption is happening. Uh, up to a few years back, there was nothing called a short video format. But TikTok came in and it made uh, music videos very viral. The 30 second music and videos along with music. So Insta Reels. Yeah, ex yeah, Instagram Reels. So, yeah. you know, uh, that made it very popular. So, that is how monetization started happening. So, we tell them that, look, they do not have a business model, but they are attracting uh, customer and are actually driving valuations for their own business models. So, like, okay, we need to be paid fairly. For other platforms, yes, like a YouTube, anything, they are actually making money by way of advertisements. So they share a uh, fair share of royalty with the, all the owners and which we share it back uh, with the author composers and the publishers. Yeah, so yeah. So, uh, so tell us about the process that how does IPRS society work with other organizations and stakeholders in the music industry and such, uh, such as record labels and streaming platforms? Well, how does, how does this all this works, the IPRS thing. What IPRS is, you know, what IPRS is, a, is a society for author, composers and publishers. In yeah. India, as I said, the publishers are also the record company. So it is very easy, seamless, you know, that, you know, whenever we are dealing with yeah. the music label, it's also the publisher. So we know that, you know, even we are coordinating with the, them because they sit on our board, because we have the biggest music publisher and the oldest music company, which is quite active and the world's largest music company is on the board also. So we have Saregama on our board, Vikram Mehra. We have Bhushan Kumarji on our board from Super Cassette. We have Sony Music on our board. We have Devra Sanyal from Universal Music on our board. We have Bandar Thakur from Times Music on our board. So these are the uh, major author composers, uh, the publisher. And Aditya Music from uh, who represents from South. And we have got Sushil Agarwal who is also a big time ultra, uh, ultra music. Uh, they are representing a lot of uh, film content. They are big in film content. And then we have got author composers led by Javed Akhtar. We have got uh, East represented by Jeet Ganguly. We have got South represented by Aris Jairaj, Saiti Charukapalli, Bombay represented by Mr. Mayur Puri oh and uh, Samir Anjan. So, you know, we have a variety of author composers on our board. See, whenever what we ask whenever people become our members that you know okay, whatever works you have, please register those works with us because you know in this today's age, especially uh, on digital platforms, it is not an X amount is paid to you. You know you need to go and claim for your royalty. So you know you need to know okay, which song belongs to you, which song belongs to your members, so that you know you can go and submit your claims. 
and accordingly pull that money out from the user and redistribute it back amongst the various holders in the ratio of 25, 25, 50. That is 25 to the lyric writer, 25 to the author, comp uh, the composer, and 50 to the publisher. We also ensure that you know everything gets registered is because you know today metadata is the most happening thing. And you know, we tell members and educate them that you know unless you register your metadata, it will not be possible for us to collect on your behalf and you get you your rightful share because users would never want to pay you what it is. And they'll say, okay, this is the whole black box, the whole database of the users or the, or the usages. You know, they'll give you a dump of yeah. probably billions of lines of data. So you need to have technology. Uh, we use technology platforms to go and claim those royalties from the user. We submit CCID claims, not even technical way, that we submit claims to those users. And then after they verify it, they give us royalties back according to our claims. So whatever claims you make, then unless you process it back and give it back to our members. This is with regards only audio. You know, whenever music gets played, there is something called as you know background music also, which fetches royalties. You know, whenever you see a villain or a serial, you know, other than song, also you see some amount of music which goes out in the background. So you know, you, sometimes you don't realize what music it is. But then I'll tell you examples of when you see Shole. You know, you, when a Gabbar Singh walks, there is music which plays in the background. Or if you use Satya Pe Satya, when the uh, Negative Amitabh Bachchan walks yeah, on the music, music, music to it. So yeah. those musics are all part of background music. Yeah. So background music also fetches royalty. So whenever films are being shown on OTT platforms or on television, we actually even collect royalties from the TV broadcasters, from the OTT platforms. And these are distributed on the basis of cue sheets. So you know, we always tell the member that you, know, you need to please register your cue sheets because it is very easy to find out a song. But it's very difficult to actually analyze a cue sheet and fill it in. Because what happens in cue sheet means whenever music get, uh, whenever you're showing a two hour movie, then it's a 120 minutes movie. You will have only 90 minutes of music. 30 minutes only will be dialogues without uh, music. Out of those 90 minutes of total music, there will be 30, 20 minutes of songs and another 70 minutes of uh, background music. So we say that this is filled in as a part of a cue sheet that you can say. For this movie or for this serial, this much is the music which was played during total time of the film or the serial being shown. And accordingly, we collect royalties and allocate it back over those uh, few sheets so that you know it goes back to the author composers or the songs and to the uh, background music uh, composer and to the publishers of the music. Wow, wow, that's great. That's the whole process. That that was very insightful. So, uh, so. Uh, IPRS has recently uh, recently have uh, have taken some initiatives and partners partnerships that uh, that you support that you are supporting in the industry. So can you discuss about the recent initiatives and collaborations? See what we said is you know if you see in the digital age newly you know we are wanting to make uh, authors and composers aware of what is copyrights all about and because you know. Uh, with, uh, as I said, you know, now everyone has become a creator, you know, because uh, if you see with advent of digital technologies, you know, everyone has started making their own either short video formats or started making the songs. And you don't need right now music companies or music publishers to release your songs in earlier days. You require that. So you may require them for better marketing or for anything, but if you want to do that independently on your own, also you can do that. So we have gone back and make everyone aware of the rights. You know, even if you go to smaller towns or villa or uh, cities, you know, a lot of people are not aware of what is copyrights and what are specific rights in music. They understand that even music companies in the smaller cities or some of the bigger cities also, they are not very aware of what are the rights, copyrights and various rights. So we go and educate them. And also we have started this whole campaign, as you asked, that yeah. learn and earn. So what we say is to the authors and composers that you should learn and earn. You should know what are your copyrights and where music gets exploited on digital platforms or various other platforms so that you, know, you should be aware of how music gets monetized or how you can monetize those music. So we are making them uh, aware by tying up with YouTube, with Facebook Meta. Then we are tying up with even Dolby Atmos, even not just for making them uh, aware about monetary rights, also to upgrade their own skills. So we are also holding classes along with them for Dolby Atmos, how to do mixing of strength, 
then we are also holding out so we recently did it in various schools also you know music schools music institutes we did it in whistling boards we did the global music and other institutes to make students and everyone aware because they are creators and they will ultimately are in, in the line of creating music or getting music created for someone so that what copyright is all about and why you should you value copyright is because you know if you value your own rights why should you know what the, those rights are and what those copyrights are so we have been tying up with various institutes or holding seminars holding workshops with everyone so that everyone gets educated yeah. we had uh, in all our learn and own programs we have got uh, even you know tune core which uh, makes people understand ki how content is deployed see today a uh, music you can also become you just you can become a creator and you can also deploy your songs on your yeah. digital platform so you need to know okay, what is an isr fee core how music can uh, how various files have to be created how they get deployed how monetization happens on various platforms you know we are trying to make a whole ecosystem and make creators understand whether it's creators or even publisher some of the smaller publishers may not have those exposure to what's happening globally so we try and make them aware of what are your rights and how content is getting monetized so that you know we want to give back to the society other than getting just royalty also upgrade their skills for everyone yeah yeah that was great that was great so uh, let's come to the technology technology and the digital platforms so what is the role that technology and digital platforms are playing in the music industry and how iprs society is leveraging these tools to benefits your members now how the benefit how they are benefited through this if you want to in the last few years as i am again repeating to say but you know what has happened is a lot of consumption has started happening only on digital platforms so you know with billions and billions of lines and rows of data it is physically impossible for any uh, human being or any organization to go ahead and collect it manually so we are tying up and continuously improving with technology service providers when we have tied up we have an currently mis asia but we are also shifting over to back office which is one of the leading service providers uh, in uh, central america central uh, south america to see that you know how we can go ahead collect royalties from various digital yeah. platforms process them and give it back to our members the same way even music company are upgrading themselves to see understand what are the different formats of uh, music which need to be deployed what are the metadata which needs to be updated because all of this has to be uploaded because when uh, when music company go through service providers you need to give them complete metadata and along with their file format so what are what is the metadata because you know they upload bulk data gets uploaded you know you can't upload one by song by song so you upload in thousands of songs or tens of thousands of songs which get ingested into the system uh, on an ott platform or any with any user so this helps with the service provider technology service providers or these formats like isrcs which are inbuilt in a song which identifies or iswc which identifies who is the author composer isrc identifies who is the recording company which has released that music this all helps the music companies or iprs societies or iswc to go ahead and claim those songs straight you know if there is a song which has got an isrc and an iswc number and if the music company and iprs knows about it so size of whenever we submitting the claim we, even if we do not know the song title or who the author composers and everything else, we can straight go ahead and say okay this iswc and this isrc belongs to my member we can straight go and claim that song for on our behalf of our members so we have to use technology because with so much of happening all around the globe and with music probably 80 85% monetization especially for record labels you know uh, on the recording label side for the publishing side it's not just uh, digital platform because we also collect from uh, television radio for background music which is a big bigger source of income and public performance but for uh, music companies are primarily label owner driven you know they get 80 85% of the income comes from streaming and digital platforms so you know, they are have to use technology uh, to get and maximize their revenues so you know technology iprs has also been trying to see upgrade its skills you know we are also only grown up in the last 3 to 4 years after the digital platform so you know we are also trying to catch up with all the best of the technologies which are available so it's not that we know everything we are also on a learning curve and yeah. there is tremendous scope for improvement we try and utilize some of the best people which are available but they try and use bmat for monitoring or for tracking or we have a back office so many people are there who do the service providers so we have a 
recently the sir company called as dj monitor which yeah. actually monit which has come down and recently talking to us that you know they go ahead and actually monitor music being played in events and in hotels and they track and identify what music is being played and they submit us reports for that so this helps us to identify our music is getting played license that and also helps us to actually distribute it back in you know, because it's not just collections technology is being used in various things to ensure that you know the royalty gets back to the correct author composer and the publisher so that right, that is the most important role of any collective management organization as ipr as an entity so that is how we leverage technology to do this that's great so any any advice do you have for aspiring musicians and composers in india who are just starting out their careers in music or in the industry any advice you have for them i would, I would say that in last uh, music actually for music creators you know this yeah. is a very apt platform you know right now at time to get into music or for creation is because you know you can do what you like you need not get dictated by what someone else wants yeah, you create you can your music passion yeah you can follow your passion and create what you like to create and if you see there are so many uh, creators those who are starting up channels and they have become a huge channels they have getting huge royalties so that you know it helps you break out from the shackles from the traditional models of how music or content was getting made or consumed that will help and secondly i advise them that you know you all are creators you should know ultimately know what your rights are all about you know because without you knowing what your rights are then you cannot complain that you know oh this right was taken away from me that i did not know about it so please understand and learn because as much as you know about creating music and creating content or videos and around music please know what your rights are all about it because ultimately the true asset what anyone has is only the copyright because ultimately in long term what will fetch you royalties is your copyright in that content which you want because it's not just for you you also leave it for your generations to come together you know uh, ujjay yeah. uh, especially on literary musical yeah. the copyright is not just ends with the author composer it continues 60 years from the death of the author and composer so yeah. this the generations also gener- get royalties whenever the music is exploited for his or her father mother anyone who's created that so you know it's not that you know that so you need to know what your rights are and you get protected not just for yourself but also for your future generations that's very true very well said uh, so looking ahead uh, what are the goals and priorities of iprs society in the coming years what's next see two things what two three things we are saying is continuously to improve technology because you know we need to give best right. service for members yeah. so that you know yes there is a continuous process of upgradation and challenges in terms of because india being a country as i said who people are not aware of the rights of how metadata how important metadata is how important cue sheets is so we continuously are educating our members to see why metadata has to be done, given why cue sheets need to be prepared and given. so we hold educational classes every week for our members of how to fill uh, cue sheets how to make so, uh, how to fill in metadata for songs so that you know they know how to do all of that because if you are not there you'll be left out of the race and then you will complain that oh my song that got played but i'm not getting my royalties mm-hmm. secondly we are also fighting for fair share of royalty you know yeah. whenever music will get played you need to be paid fairly i am saying that because a lot of people are still not making directly consuming music or they are uh, using giving it to the users free we are saying give us a fair share not the share what we deserve but at least a fair share and third is you know in spite of so much of challenges in spite of government passing laws and everything big users because of their dominant positions you know continue to deny to pay royalties to creators whether it be author composers music publishers or sometimes even to content owners so you know we want to see that you know a lot of these uh, users of music actually pay to ipr cmos and see that through that to the authors composers and publishers of music which will help us increasing our pie because you know mm-hmm. in india uh, the music if you see the retail market size where you know more than india say that you have three or four million retail shops all across india whether hotels restaurants uh, malls those uh, shops everywhere and most of a lot of them play music i would say you know, even if 5% of them play music we are talking about a number of 
200,000, 2 lakhs. So, no, what IPRS licenses is not more than 10 to around 10 to 12,000. Yeah. So, we're talking that, you know, we have a size, we can grow up 20 times if everyone starts paying us for music. So, we are trying to slowly uh, reach out to them. Right. A country like India, where we are only 560 crores, but, you know, if you go to uh, advanced markets, obviously, we are just trying to see that over a period of time that would happen. A US ASCAP BMI, which is an equivalent of IPRS there, uh, has both of them put together collect two and a half, three billion dollars annually. A PRS in UK collects something like 700 million pounds. Japan market collects a billion dollars. In most of the European countries, it's upward of 500, 600 million euros. So, you know, Asia, it's a challenge. Slowly, everyone started paying for it because in all other countries. It will slowly happen. But, you know, we are all trying to see that everyone has to pay for music and you have to pay a fair share of the music. That was great, great, great. So, thank you so much, Mr. Negum, for this insightful session with, uh, with us on thank our you. Power People. Thank you so much for your time. It was great. Thank you. Thanks, so thanks for inviting me. Thanks for uh, inviting IPRS to understand what role IPRS plays, how do we protect the creators. Because ultimately, you know, any country is known by the creators and the creativity it protects is because, you know, I would say, you know, if you just see history, you do not remember who the big kings were 50 years or 100 years or nine, and you will not know which industrialists or houses would remain after 50 years or 100 years. But you would always remember the songs that was on 50 or 100 years back and songs which are making today will also be remembered after 100 years. So, you know, that is why we see that most of the countries across the world actually protect their culture. And this is a soft power which we can export outside of India also. So, you know, we all, uh, you know, just pray to everyone that, you know, and request that, you know, please fairly compensate music or for film that got created so that, you know, you get better creators. And if you only reward the creators, only then you will get more better music and music which will be remembered for generations and Music, people will remember that these are come from India. Today, Natu Natu has brought India yeah. to the for, for AB. They are our members. Like Chandra Bose has written the song and M.N. Karim who has done composition. So, we say that, okay, this is a soft power of music. So, people will remember the song that what people will play across the world. Yeah. They will remember the big industrialists or the powerhouses what we have. So, that is why we say protect uh, encourage copyright, protect creativity, pay for music, pay for music. Oh my, thank you so much. That, it was amazing chatting with you. Thank you so much for this insightful session. We'll, we will be more than happy to have you again on this show. Thank you thanks, so much. Much. thanks for everything. And you know, hope for that you know, we have been able to convey what IPRS does and you yeah. take this forward to see that you know, all music users should actually take licenses yeah. and pay the right to pay for music. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.